Howdy guys, Rex here. We're taking a look at the Meprolite M21, okay? This is made in Israel, right? And uh, this is something that's been fielded for quite a long time in some serious conditions. Uh, this is one of the most battle-proven optics in terms of ruggedness I know about. Guys keep asking, what's more rugged than this? What's more rugged than that? Is the ACOG more rugged than this? So there's a general category of like what I would refer to as tier one battle sites that are kind of at the top. Uh, amongst them would be like, you know, the Trigicon ACOG is one that's pretty rugged. Uh, the Elcan M145s and the Spectres and all those are pretty darn heavy duty, right? Aim Point is a different style of optic, more of a red dot style sight, right? Uh, we just reviewed the uh, Primary Arms Compact One Power Cyclops with the ACSS reticle. So there's a lot of optics that come into this, this category of stuff that's heavy duty, that's not gonna break down. This is one that might perhaps be towards the top of it, the heavy dutiness scale. Uh, if you look at the construction of it, it's solid aluminum, but it's built like really thick, it's built like a tank. And if you've ever gotten a chance to travel over uh, to the Levant and you're hanging out, maybe going on an elevator or something like that, and you notice the chick is wearing, you know, the M4 across her back, and she's got one of these, and there's no finish on the rifle or the optic. You can't even tell what kind of optic it is. All the numbers are wore off. Um, there's like mangled, it's shredded, there's like dents in it. This is half smashed in, and there's like, it's just raw aluminum with dirt smeared on it kind of deal, right? And uh, what that, but it's clean, and it's still operational. You're looking at the M21 site. They're very, very heavy duty. This is a dual illuminated optic. That means that there's two sources of lighting because you have, if you look through the optic here, through the glass, and if you can see that, there's uh, there's different styles of reticles. I like the little triangle reticle because you have an infinitely small aiming point if you do need to make some kind of precision shot, but yet it's still big enough, the triangle is, for like very uh, fast target acquisition at like point blank range, right? But you'll notice that it has kind of a strong tealish, kind of greenish blue color to it. Uh, this site is actually engineered for the lighting conditions in the Levant, in that part of the world, the Middle East, right? Where it's very, very bright desert. If you've ever been over there, it's like really bright, it's blindingly bright. And even in the urban settings, um, the engineers for this optic set it up to be visible against that reticle with the amber reticle in there. Uh, given the tritium, the brightness of the tritium, or the, maybe the lack of the brightness of the site in the daytime in general. Uh, but with all the uh, different... Uh, dynamics involved with the lighting conditions this was engineered for this is what that's made for that's why it has that color to it a lot of guys have an interesting discussion on you know uh this scope looks more bluish tint so like night force has a cool look or you know schmittenbender has a warm look and i have my personal preferences but those are based on my lighting conditions so each one of those different optics they have engineers that work for them and they design it around the parameters that they are looking at, that they see fit for whatever use that has, right? And so some of them are designed to work better in low light. Some of them are designed to work better in extremely bright light. That's why different optics will have different looks to them. So a guy can critique it for your applications, but remember that that critique is based on your exact area of operations and lighting conditions. Uh, but the reason this is has that look to it is for those reasons, so that this uh, is most visible under those lighting conditions. That being said, like it's extremely heavy duty. That is being illuminated by two different ways. There is a fiber optic gathering system up in here and up in front here. So the natural lighting comes in, hits those fiber optic tubes, gets fed into the little uh, elect, uh, it's not electronic, gets, get, gets fed into the reticle and it illuminates it that way. And also it's powered by hydrogen three, H3. You guys know what that is, right? Same stuff as in the Trigicon ACOG, that's tritium gas, a radioactive gas with a half-life of a little bit less than 10 years. Uh, that means that it, it loses half of its radioactivity in uh, 10 years. And uh, after that, then every other, or eight years or 8.5 years or 9.3 years, uh, whichever exact number you're going by. And uh, it'll lose a certain amount. It'll lose half of its life every one of those time frames. okay? And so it'll last for a while, uh, longer than batteries, but it won't last forever. So sometimes these might have to be recharged or you might have to replace a site, right? 
um, if you do kind of lose your illumination and you re you're more reliant on the tritium. Uh, but that's why it's dual illuminated. They do have the fiber optics in here. Uh, so it's very similar to an ACOG in that respect. It, it does have the tritium and the fiber optic illumination. This is, in my opinion, a bit more crude and heavy duty than the ACOG. This would be very difficult for me to break even if I tried to. Uh, it's just built very tough. Uh, so that's the thing it's got going for it. I use this as a backups uh, optic on this rifle, which the primary is this. You guys remember this deal? This is the uh, Pulsar Thermal Scope, okay? This is the XP50, I believe is the model number. Uh, this is a really incredible optic, uh, but it's battery powered. And so if this thing farts out on me when you need it most, I can just take this off. This deal's very compact. I can just keep it on me. And then I just snap this on here and you're still good to go with an illuminated reticle for low light conditions and all that stuff. And then as backups, I have on here the uh, uh, excess sighting systems, flip up sights. These are actually on a Troy uh, sight, if I am remembering correctly. And uh, they're very nicely colored, uh, very easy to see. I actually like them a lot. And with this sight, you can do the old co-witness business and get kind of a battle sight zero done in just a second, you align your sights through the optic and you turn your screw up on top here and your screw here for your elevation and your windage adjustments. If you can see the screw right here, guys, there you go. That's the uh, back and forth, left and right kind of deal. And this is your up and down adjustment, okay? And it'll tell you which way is up and down, okay? And so when you shoot and the bullet misses and you want the impact to go up or down, you just follow that. How much does it adjust? These are pretty crude adjustments. This is not a precision long range rifle scope with one eighth minute of angle turrets. This is a battle site designed for like Armageddon, literally. I mean, this is actually right now fielded all over the Valley of Armageddon, the literal one. Uh, so whenever something happens there someday, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the things that's there, okay? Um, but so with that in mind, Armageddon battle people don't need to worry so much about one eighth minute of angle. They just need to kill a bad guy that's like, there's 10 million of them or whatever. I have, you guys read the book, you know the story. Uh, what's coming around the corner there one day maybe, right? And so with all that being said, um, each click on here at 25 meters, so you get this thing at 25 meters to establish that uh, kind of battle side zero and then you uh, adjust it, each click is gonna be approximate to 12.5 millimeters. How much is that? What's a millimeter? Nobody knows what a millimeter is. Well, 25 meters is kind of close to 25 yards, right? Uh, sort of, right? And if you, we, you can do the math, but we're not gonna get into that. And then 12.5 uh, millimeters is approximately half an inch. So it's gonna move about yay much per click at you know 25 meters. And so not super hard to do. Uh, what they actually say in the manual to do on this is to sight it in at 50 meters. If you're right on at 50, you know, you're gonna have that good point blank zero range all the way out to be able to be pretty darn flat shooting out to 300 yards. So from zero to 300, it's like the, the battle sight zero, just like on an M16, you know, A2 or whatever. You just put it on the eight thirds or whatever deal, one click pass there, zero to 25, and you go down to 300 you know, theoretically for all their applications. And so that's kind of cool. And so it's relatively easy to use, really easy to adjust. Not a lot of crap on here other than that to talk about. It's just super heavy duty. That's why I really like this deal. Uh, so this is something that's good for a backup site. Um, and uh, I was running this on that uh, Tavor for a while because it's kind of a good marriage there. Uh, but uh, now we got it on this. By the way, if you guys haven't, if you're wondering what this deal is, this is one of my favorite ARs now after I've been running it for a while and I'm slow to warm up to new stuff and I I call it new stuff it's been around forever right Midwest industry has been around for a long time I've always been a Colt guy I'm kind of a traditionalist uh, when I grew up and I got my first AR-15 when I was a little teeny bopper I, it was a Colt because I was the best one you could buy over the counter in my area right they didn't have all this fancy they only had like two different kinds of AR-15s and Colt was the one that actually shot and so back in them days, I acquired a bunch of Colts and uh, that's what I've been running for a long time. And, uh, but this thing is awesome. This is configured very nicely. It's every bit as reliable as that. It's, it's put together very nicely. Um, the balance is nice. I do like the configuration of the barrel or hand guards. It's very nice and lightweight up here, which is kind of good. And I like, uh, I got the 51 tooth flash hider uh, deal for the uh, SDN six silencer, right? 
and then it has their their stock and their furniture on here and everything is configured nicely i think i put a h3 buffer tube in here for use with the silencer it's just a pressure no it's a silencer sorry and um <laughs> that's uh and the trigger's good and all that kind of stuff you know for a, for a rifle that you're going to use to like throw in the truck and and when armageddon happens and you're going to use it or whatever then this is a great way to go it's just configured in a very smart way for actual field use and so i like it but uh, yeah, we'll have more. And this rifle has been seen in quite a few reviews already. If you've seen the uh, review on this XP50 deal here, this uh, uh, Pulsar Thermal Sight. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. If you're the only guy in your neighborhood with a thermal and um, it all happens one day and the zombies attack, well, zombies don't put up maybe a huge amount of body heat. I'm not sure about that. But whenever the you know, attack of the, the giant rabbits, or if you watch those 70 horrors, horror movies, um, you're going to be the most popular guy on the block if you got a thermal sight for your weapon. That thing is incredible. I mean, like, there's no hiding from that at all. So that's worth taking out a small loan for instead of for a motorcycle or a snowmobile or a stereo system for your car. You can just, it's probably as much as that, right? Or, or a boat. You don't need that crap. What you need is a thermal optic for your rifle. Nice thing too is solid state technology, right? So it's not like intensifier tubes and all this stuff that's real fragile and will break on you. This is like basically like a modern video camera, which that technology has been very, very rugged. It's been ruggedized. It's been battle tested. You give enough uh, digital cameras to a bunch of millennial teenagers throwing them around in their cars or whatever and eventually they get all the components to work good and so these are actually really tough and i've been using it for quite a while another one of my compadres has been using one for quite a while very effective with it and you can you can see like you can identify what kind of mammal you're looking at out to a thousand yards and you can recognize a dude's face at least out to i'd say 50 or 75 with this thing that's pretty darn good uh so yeah if you need a backup site, you know, for your thermal or whatever else you're doing, or if you got like a, a normal, you know, like a more fragile optic of some kind, like a, maybe a, if you got a DMR rifle and you got a precision optic and it's, you know, those things are possible that they, they can, they can break, man. I mean, a scope is a fragile instrument. This on the other hand is not a fragile <laughs> instrument in comparison to a rifle scope. So this might be a good way to, uh, uh, have a good solid backup for uh, your World War III Armageddon needs. All right, guys, that was the review on the M21 by Meprolite. I did find this deal, I think, on Optics Planet. And so they got a lot of cool stuff there. If you guys haven't ever been to Optics Planet, they got a huge amount of stuff, like ridiculous amount of different things you can get. And so do check that out. And uh, we'll catch you when it all happens, guys. All right, take care.